The Dennis Bonin faction is desperate to hang on to power. It's March 13th, 2024, and these are your headlines. If Republican House members are smart, they will ignore the loud repudiation of the culture in Austin by voters in Texas last week and continue to let Democrats run the show. Well, those aren't my words, those aren't my thoughts, but that's what they're being told by Austin insiders. And it was that sentiment that was shared publicly by disgraced former Speaker Dennis Bonin recently in an interview on Spectrum News, analyzing the ongoing election cycle and the upcoming legislative session. Now, following last week's bloodbath of Republican incumbents in the primary election, remember, nine incumbents were defeated outright with more being forced into runoff elections. Well, attention has turned to the race boiling in the background. Who will lead the Texas House in 2025? Now, current Speaker Dade Phelan has been sent into a runoff election of his own after coming in second place in the primary. Win or lose in that May runoff, lawmakers have already begun to move on from him. Discussions are churning about who the next speaker will be and, more importantly, how that next speaker will govern. It's a position Bonin has some limited experience with. He was elected Speaker of the House in 2019, only to be forced to announce his resignation less than a year later due to his role in a bribery scandal. Phelan became Speaker in 2021 and has held the gavel ever since. Capitol observers have argued, however, that Bonin never really left. He's still in Austin. He started up a lobbying firm. His close allies, people like Representatives Dustin Burroughs, Cody Harris, well, they've remained in power as chairs of powerful committees. And now it's those same members that are courting support behind the scenes in an attempt to keep the speakership in the hands of the same faction next session. Now, in the interview from yesterday, Bonin defended the practice of placing Democrats in power. He said, I think if the Republicans are smart, one of the greatest things that makes Texas better than Washington is the fact that everyone has a chance to be heard in that body, and more importantly, how you make sure you don't get treated like Kevin McCarthy did in Washington, D.C., is you leave Democrats interested in working with you. It was another comment made by Bonin that shed the most light on the mentality of the bonin feeling cabal that has plagued the House for years. He said, if you say Democrats take your things and go home, talking about not appointing them to leadership positions, he said, why would a Democrat vote for a Republican speaker? Well, yeah, indeed. Why would a Democrat vote for a Republican speaker? Remember, Republicans hold a majority in the Texas House. That's currently 86 of the chamber's 150 seats. And that's a reflection of the will of the voters here in Texas who have cast their ballots every two years, putting Republicans in charge now for quite some time. Furthermore, over 81% of Republican primary voters say they disapprove of, of the practice of awarding committee chairmanships to Democrats. It was a legislative priority of the Texas GOP this last session. Bonin then ran through the math. He said, the next speaker could be elected by a group of 50 to 60 Republicans joined by 20 to 25 Democrats. So a slim majority of the members, and he called the rest of those, those members on the left or the right, well, they're extreme, he said. He said they can yell and scream and bark at each other while that 80 to 90 reasonable good people who want to represent their district go govern. Now, Bonin's blueprint for diminishing the voice of conservatives is important, and it's one that was largely repudiated last week, where the issue of placing Democrats in powerful leadership positions was a marquee issue of many of the challengers who had defeated conservative incumbents on Tuesday night. It will be an even bigger issue in the upcoming runoff elections. And through public interviews and private conversations, Bonin and his shrinking group of allies in the Texas legislature are working overtime. Make no mistake, they're working overtime to fight back against the conservative urgent, uh, insurgency and to preserve the status quo. Those who want to see the Texas House reformed as an institution must work harder. A recently unearthed newsletter from last fall appears to confirm that Outgoing Representative Glenn Rogers worked with school district officials to engage in electioneering prior to the Republican primary last week. The article was obtained by Texas Scorecard through an open records request to Garner Independent School District. It was included in the fall 2023 issue of the district's news mailer, which is distributed to parents and school faculty. Now, we had previously reported on text messages provided via an open records request to Breckenridge ISD showing Rogers sharing an almost identical article with school administrators in an iMessage group chat. 
in those leaked messages. One school administrator, presumably with Garner ISD, alluded to a version of Rogers' article that was published in the newsletter. The version shared in that 14-member group chat was published online in the Palo Pino Press under the title, Vouchers Are Not Conservative. The other one was titled, Why I Oppose School Vouchers. In both of those articles, Rogers framed school choice as, quote, a Trojan horse attempt to privatize Texas's education system and drain our already underfunded public education of necessary resources for millions of children. However, the Texas Conservative Coalition Research Institute found that Texas public education expenditures have risen $33 billion between 2012 and 2022, with per-pupil spending increasing by $5,500 over that same period. Garner ISD's actions could constitute a violation of Texas's election code, says that state officials or employees cannot knowingly spend or authorize the spending of public funds for political advertising. In addition, school district board members are barred from using state or local funds to electioneer for or against any candidate, measure, or political party. Attorney General Ken Paxton has been active this year in pursuing electioneering cases. His office has filed civil lawsuits against seven school districts for allegedly engaging in electioneering during the recent election. Are you worried about your kid's future? You should be. I'm Charles Blaine with Texas Tomorrow. This is a show where we're gonna talk about the issues and the people that are pushing the policies that concern your family, your home, and your kids. Catch Texas Tomorrow every Thursday. Attorney General Paxton is proposing a new rule to enhance reporting requirements for district and county attorneys. Now this new rule would apply to district and county attorneys in counties with a population of 250,000 or more. Currently, around 20 counties would fit that parameter, including the big ones you know, right? Harris, Dallas, Tarrant, Bear, Travis, El Paso. Now, according to Paxton, these enhanced reporting standards will create much needed transparency and enable the public to hold their elected officials accountable. He said that information collected under the proposed rule will assist citizens in determining whether their local elected officials are inadequately prosecuting certain categories of crime, releasing dangerous criminals back into the community, engaging in selective prosecution, or otherwise failing to uphold their obligations. In an effort to curb this behavior from activist district and county attorneys, lawmakers passed House Bill 17 last year that prohibits the DA or county attorney from adopting a policy that refuses to prosecute a certain class of crime. This legislation followed a decision in the summer of 2022 of five Texas DAs, Jose Garcia in Travis County, John Cruzo in Dallas County, Joe Gonzalez in Bear County, Mark Gonzalez in Nueces County, and Brian Middleton of Fort Bend County, who announced their own refusal to prosecute illegal abortions. This was not the first time local district attorneys hand-selected which crimes to punish. In 2019, Dallas County DA Cruzo announced he would not prosecute some low-level and nonviolent crimes. Paxton's new rule would serve as yet another accountability check on district and county attorneys. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.